I'm Alyssa from Alyssa Threads. Today we're gonna be sewing this dress that I'm wearing right now, which is my summer Nomi pattern. It's ME2039. I can't tell you how excited I am about this dress. It has everything that I love, ruffles, it's big and poofy and flowy, it has big puff sleeves. You can sew either the tie version or the puff sleeves. I honestly can't pick which one I love more. They're both so much fun. I hope that you love this pattern as much as I do. And if you guys happen to sew this dress too, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Alyssa Threads. I can't wait to see your version of this dress. Okay, so let's go over everything you need for your pattern. On the back here, it has all of the measurements and it will tell you how much fabric you need. So the fabric that it suggests are cotton blend, cotton lawns, gauze, gingham, poplin, seersucker, silk, silky types. And then for the petticoat, the petticoat is going to make this dress really poofy. Um, we're going to use tool for that. And then for the lining, you'll just need cotton or polyester blend. And then you'll need a little bit of interfacing. And then for notions, you'll need an invisible zipper. And I'm going to show you guys how to sew an invisible zipper really easily. And then you'll also need um, single fold bias tape for the puff sleeve version. If you're just sewing the one with the ties, you don't need the bias tape. And you'll also need elastic for the puff sleeve version too. Okay, here are all the pieces that you're gonna need for view A and for view B. You're gonna need a bodice and you're gonna cut the fabric and the lining out of this one. And then piece two is gonna be the bodice back and you're also gonna cut the fabric and the lining. If you want to add that cute ruffle around the top, you're gonna to need pieces three and four, and you're just cutting the fabric out of these, and then you're gonna make sure you cut it on the fold. If you're gonna be sewing the puff sleeve version, which is view A, you're gonna need pieces five, six, and seven, but today we're only gonna be sewing the ties. Um, if you want to know how to sew the puff sleeve version, I have sewn the same way on my last sew along. So if you need help sewing your puff sleeve, you can look at that sew along. And then for the skirt, you're gonna need piece eight and you're gonna cut three of these on the fold. These are gonna be the front and the back and we're, when these are all sewn together, we're gonna gather them and it's gonna make one big skirt. And then the second is the lower ruffle. This is gonna be the piece that is gathered down here and we're gonna need four of those. Piece 10 is for the lining and the petticoat. This is how we're gonna sew the petticoat. And if you've never sewn a petticoat before, do not worry about it. I'm gonna show you exactly how to sew it. And we're gonna need piece 11, and this is what we're gonna cut in the tool. So we're gonna need four of these and three of these. And the last piece that we're gonna need, if you're sewing view B, um, we're gonna need piece 12 and this is gonna be for the straps and we are gonna need four of those. On our instructions here, if there's any part that you get confused or you don't know what something means, there is all of this information up here. And then there's also, you'll find your seam allowance and you'll also have your glossary here that will help you if you're not sure what something means. So let's get started for dress A and B. It doesn't matter if you're sewing the sleeve, the puff sleeves or the straps, we're gonna do the same for the bodice here. So we are gonna sew our darts together on the main fabric and the lining. Okay, so we have our lining here and our main fabric and we're just gonna take some pins and pin our darts together. I like to line up the sides here. Okay, now that we have our darts pinned, we're gonna go sew our darts. When we're sewing the darts, you wanna back stitch right here at the very beginning. And then once you get to the point right here, you're kinda gonna trail off and leave your threads really long here, just a couple of inches, and then we'll knot this and this will stop the darts from coming apart. Then when we press it, it's going to be nice and clean. Okay. 
Okay, now that we've sewn our darts, I press them down for the lining and the main fabric. We're gonna take our back pieces and line them up with the edge of our front piece, making sure our notches line up. And then we wanna do the same for the lining. Okay, then we're gonna go sew these at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I've sewn the sides together and then I press the seams toward the back. This dress will be fully enclosed with a lining, so I'm not gonna take the time to overlock my seam allowances in here, but if you wanna do that, this is your dress, you can sew it however you like. Okay, now we're gonna set this aside and we are going to sew our ruffle. So we're gonna take our front ruffle pieces and our back. You'll have the notch here to show you that this is the center back, so we want to sew these together. And we're gonna sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on each side. Okay, I've sewn my ruffles together and then I press them out. Now with right sides together, I'm going to finish this edge here by sewing 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now I'm gonna turn these right side out and I'm gonna press this entire top. I'm gonna press it flat in half like this. Now we're gonna sew a gather stitch along the raw edge of our ruffle here. And by doing that, we're gonna turn our length all the way up and the same with our tension. I usually just go to the highest setting of the length and the tension. And then we are gonna sew just a straight stitch all the way down, making sure we leave some thread at the end. We do not want to back stitch here all the way to the very end and make sure you leave a good chunk of thread at the end to pull it. Okay, now that we have our gathering stitch sewn here, I like to do this little trick where I find the center of my piece that I'm gathering and I make a little mark. And then I do the same for the top here. So I just fold it in half, find the center, make a mark there so that when I'm gathering, everything will be done really even. And I just line that up here, pin it. Whenever I'm sewing ruffles or gathers, I like to use clips because pins are very easy to lose in the ruffles and you might sew over one and break your needle. I have learned the hard way a few times. So that's why I like to use clips for this part. Okay, I've got my ruffle clipped at the top of the entire bodice, starting at my large dot on each side. Now I'm gonna base stitch this ruffle all the way across the top, making sure not to back stitch at the, be the beginning and end. Okay, now that we have our ruffle sewn, we are gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on the straps now. Since we're not sewing the puff sleeve version, we are just gonna skip all over this, but if you are sewing the puff sleeve version and you feel like you need a little help with that, you can go back to my sew along for my ME2019. I sew a puff sleeve on this bodice and it's pretty much the same construction as this puff sleeve here. The only difference is that there's a bias binding closure here instead of elastic, but really you could do either way, that's preference. So we are gonna sew the straps, which is view B, and we are gonna take our straps here and we're gonna fold them right sides together. My fabric is a little hard to see the right sides. Okay, so when we're sewing the straps here, we're gonna start on the folded edge 
and we're gonna back stitch here so across the shorter edge and then leave our needle in the fabric lift up the presser foot and we're just gonna pivot across and then sew all the way down And then when you get to the end, you just want to back stitch, and you're done with your strap. Okay, I've pressed all of my straps flat. Now we're going to attach them to the bodice where our markings are in the front and the back. When you're pinning your straps, you wanna make sure that your ruffle is pointed down. It's gonna be sandwiched between the strap and the main fabric. And then we are just gonna take these over to our sewing machine and we're gonna base stitch them in place. Once our straps are all base stitched, we are going to work on our skirt now. For our skirt front and back and our lining, we're gonna take one panel and lay it flat. And then we're gonna take the other two and pin it on each side that way. And we're gonna do the same here. And we're gonna sew the side seams 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we're gonna do the same thing on the lining. Okay, I've sewn my three skirt pieces together for the main fabric and the lining, and then I pressed my seams toward the center back. You can overlock this if you want. This is gonna be fully enclosed, so you're not gonna see the seam allowances on anything because it's gonna be facing wrong sides together. If you wanna overlock them, go ahead and do that. Now that we've sewn our three skirt panels together, we're gonna to sew the center back from the notch here in the center of the skirt all the way down to the bottom, making sure to back stitch at each end. And we're gonna do the same for the lining, just sewing between the two notches here, leaving this piece open. Okay, now that we're done sewing our skirt together, we are gonna sew our ruffle pieces together. This is gonna be four pieces and we're sewing it just in a big loop. And then before I gather it, I like to finish the hem it just makes it so much easier when it's not gathered. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna sew the gather stitch. I've finished the hem and I've sewn the gather stitch all the way around. We are gonna move this up. I'm gonna adjust my gathers if they need. Sometimes it just works and it's the perfect length. But if I need, I can just pull my stitch here be careful not to break your gather stitch, but I just use a pin and pull it up and I'll just gather where I need. I know that's not the right way to do it, but after all of my years of sewing gathers and ruffles, I kind of know what works best for me. And that's the easiest way that I can do it. Now that we have the ruffle clip to the skirt, I'm gonna go sew it all the way around at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that we've sewn our ruffle to our skirt, I pressed my seams up toward the top of the skirt, and I'm a big believer in pressing as you're going. If you wanna save while you're pressing to the end, go ahead and do that, but I like to do it as I'm going through. It just makes it so much easier for me. 
Okay, now we're gonna start on the petticoat down here. I've already sewn all of my skirt lining pieces together. So I'm just gonna go hem the bottom of it by doing a narrow hem and folding it over twice. I'm gonna uh, overlock mine all the way around and then fold it once at about an inch or so. You're not gonna see this, so it really doesn't matter how you hem it. Um, it's totally your preference, but I'm gonna overlock it and then press it up and sew it all the way around. Okay, now that our hem is finished, we're also gonna finish the center back where we're gonna insert the zipper. And I just used my overlocker to go over that, but you can double fold it and sew it with your sewing machine. Just a straight stitch to finish it that way. Okay, now we are gonna take all of our tool and we're gonna sew all four of these pieces together like we did with the lower ruffle of the skirt before. We're gonna sew all four of these together and then gather stitch the top. Okay, on the wrong side of our skirt lining petticoat, we are going to attach the tool that we've just added this gather stitch and we're going to add this wrong sides together so where your seam is here we want to make sure that that is against the other wrong side here and we're just going to pin it all the way around on this line that we created Okay, now I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew the tool all the way around on my sewing machine. Okay, now that we've sewn the tool to the lining, we have our petticoat. And don't worry about this, when you're wearing your dress, this is gonna be sandwiched in between the main fabric and the lining. So this won't be itchy on you at all. This is the part that's gonna be facing your body, not this side, so you don't have to worry about it irritating you or being annoying. Okay, so let's move on to adding our skirts to our bodice. Okay, now we're gonna take both of our skirt pieces and we're gonna sew a gather stitch all the way around between these two notches here on the main fabric and the lining. So we are going off the instructions a little bit and I'm gonna sew mine a little bit differently. I'm gonna add my skirts to my bodice separately and then I'm gonna add my zipper and then I'm gonna sew my dresses together. That's just what makes the most sense to me when I'm sewing. And I also wanna note that the side seam on your skirt, it's not gonna line up with the side seam on your dress. We are matching up this notch here with the notch on your bodice. So your side seam is gonna be over to the side a little bit, a few inches off, but this just gives it that big gathered look. So I'm gonna attach my bodice to my skirt piece now, making sure we're lining up the two front notches with the two front notches of our dress. Okay, now we have our bodice pieces pinned to our skirt pieces. So I'm gonna go straight stitch those together all the way around at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're gonna sew our invisible zipper onto our dress. And I know this part can seem a little intimidating, but I am gonna walk you through it. 
I'm gonna be using an invisible zipper presser foot and my machine came with this little silver one, but I really prefer this plastic one because you can see through it and it helps you guide your zipper a little bit better. So this is the one that I prefer to use. So if you need to shorten your zipper, um, mine is a little too long. I think it's like double what it's supposed to be. If you need to shorten your zipper, all you're gonna do is like measure how short you wanna shorten it and make a little mark where you wanna sew it. And you're just gonna sew a zigzag stitch across here. Make sure your zipper is up. Sew a zigzag stitch where you want your zipper to be and then snip off the bottom here. Okay, let's get started with the zipper. The first thing that I do when I'm sewing an invisible zipper, I unzip it and then I take this over to my iron and I press this flat. This is gonna help you get super close to the zipper when you're sewing. It just makes it so much easier. So I'm gonna go press these open and then we're gonna pin it to our dress. So I've pressed my zipper and you will know that you've done it right when it goes like this, when it's zipped. So we're just gonna unzip it and we wanna lay this right sides together and where your zipper ends here, I'm gonna make a little mark so that you can see it better. We kind of wanna line that up with the dot that we have on our dress because when we're sewing the bodice together when we're sewing the lining it's going to sandwich this in between and that's where we kind of want the zipper to start so that it ends where we're going to like flip it over so i'm going to start with right sides together i'm going to line up my dots and i'm just going to pin this I'm kind of using the pin to hold open where we press this flat because that's how we're gonna get the needle really close to the zipper to make it truly invisible. And then I'm gonna attach my invisible zipper foot to my sewing machine and we're just gonna sew this down here. Okay, we have one side of our zipper sewn in. You can see how nice and close that is to the fabric without going over it. And I truly believe that the key is to ironing your zipper flat before you sew. Okay, now we're gonna take the other side of our zipper and this is where it can get kind of confusing trying to put it um, the right way because you don't want to sew this inside out. So I like to keep it zipped a bit and then I fold it over where I need to place it. And then I pin it and unzip the rest and pin it in place. Okay, now I'm gonna go sew this side of the zipper down. Once you're done sewing that side, then you just want to give it a quick check to make sure you did everything right and everything is faced in the right way. And there we have a beautiful invisible zipper. You can see mine is right in here. 
And now we're just gonna close up this opening here with a regular zipper foot. Okay, before we take this over, this is the opening that we're gonna be closing. And we're gonna start from here and sew just a little bit past where our invisible zipper foot is. And I'm gonna take my regular zipper foot to sew this opening closed. Okay, we've closed this opening here, and just to make everything look nice and neat, I'm gonna give this a good press, and then we're gonna add the lining. We're gonna sew the lining and main fabric together, and this is gonna be right sides together, and you wanna make sure your zipper is laying flat, and your ruffles and straps are going downward like this, and then we're gonna take our lining and we're just gonna line it up and i'll also show you how to sew the lining to the zipper once we have this all sewn in so you want to make sure your ruffles and your straps are pointed down and we want to make sure all of our notches are lining up as we pin it all the way around Okay, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna sew all the way around at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once this is stitched all the way around at the top, we're gonna take the lining and we're gonna pin the zipper. So it's gonna be sandwiched, the zipper's gonna be sandwiched in between the lining and the main fabric. And we're just gonna pin that all the way down to where our zipper ends, right down here. We're gonna do that on both sides, making sure that our zipper is flat and it's sandwiched in between the main fabric, there's the zipper and there's the lining. We just wanna pin that down. Okay, and then we're gonna take this back to our sewing machine and we're gonna use just the regular zipper foot, not the invisible zipper foot, to sew the lining because we're just kind of sewing it to the seam allowance. When you turn it right side out, um, this isn't gonna matter because it's gonna be on the inside of your dress and I'll show you what that looks like. I know things are looking a little crazy, but I went and sewed my zipper down here and then I also closed this opening just like we did on the main fabric. Now I'm just gonna cut any loose threads. This is gonna be sandwiched between your main fabric and your lining, so you're not really gonna see this, but I just like to cut off those loose threads anyway. And the last thing you wanna do before you turn this right side out is snip off these little corners right here. This is gonna help get a really pointy corner when we're turning it right side out. This is the fun part. We're gonna turn everything right side out. And when we're doing this, we want to, you wanna grab something sharp to, pu to push out these corners here. I have just this little piece of a loop turner that I actually don't even use the rest of it. I just keep this on hand. And we're gonna use that to poke out the corner here to get it nice and neat. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side. Okay, it's all right sides out. I'm gonna take this and press it flat here. And then I'm gonna do an understitch all the way around the ruffle here just so that it doesn't ever get weird or like have some weird pulling. And that's it, that's gonna be our final step. Okay, that is the end of the sew along. We have our dress all ruffled, we've got the zipper sewn, we have these big beautiful ties. It has everything that I love. I hope you guys had so much fun. 